Production funding for Ruckus has been provided by gifts from Dave and Jamie Cummings, the Hartwig family, Barbara and Peter Gattermeyer, the Courtney S. Turner Charitable Trust, John H. Mize and Bank of America N.A. co-trustees, and by viewers like you. Thank you. And welcome to Ruckus, our weekly food for thought fight over the news of the day and the trends of the times. I'm Mike Shannon. The Ruckettes join me shortly in our topics this week. A street fight ends in Kansas City. Washington fights over a wall. And Kansans fight over a future senator. Plus, of course, roast and toast. But we're going to start with our newsmaker segment and talk about what's happening at City Hall in Kansas City, Missouri. And joining me to discuss all of that is First District Councilwoman Heather Hall, elected in 2015 to represent the First District in Clay County. And she is on the ballot again for the April primary, running without opposition. Should be a really tough election for you. <laughs> well, it'll definitely be a different one. Councilwoman Heather Hall, welcome to Ruckus. Thank you very much for coming in and uh, being with us this week. Thank you uh, for having You me. were one of four members of the city council who voted no to the idea of changing Paseo Boulevard to the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. What were some of your reasons for that, uh, that decision? Well, there were a lot of reasons, but one of them I'll just tell you is the mayor had appointed a, a group to say, let's, let's decide what this should look like. And their recommendation was first was 63rd Street. And I feel like we should have been more responsive to our constituents' um, recommendations, and we were not. Another issue is we spent a lot of money and time making Paseo a historic designation. And it's like, where does that go now? Um, another reason is, you know, even though Paseo does not run through my district, it does uh, matter to a lot of my constituents. And globally through the city, I had several hundred emails, and of those several hundred emails, more than 85% of them said, do not do anything with it. So I feel like I need to respect those wishes of the constituents. And then finally, it's 80 blocks, and 80 blocks is a long way to change um, street signs, to pay for that. And a lot of the constituents along that did not, more than 50% of them did not say, I want it. And so I wonder why we said yes to less than 50% of the people on the block, but not more than 50%. Why do you suppose that happened? Why do you suppose the council said yes? Well, I guess there's a lot of reasons why my colleagues may have said yes instead of no, but I still don't believe it's the right answer. Pressure from certain interest groups in Kansas City? Well, I would hope not, um, but I hope that they, I believe they had reasons that they believe were the right things. I just believe we need to listen to I our wonder folks. how long it's going to take to make all the changes. Well, they say it's going to be $60,000 and we'll get it done soon, but remember, these signs are going to be, people are going to want them, and I'm afraid people will steal them, and then we have to replace them, and so I don't think it's going to be $60,000. It's You're going to be a lot of money. north of the river up in Clay County. Yes. Uh, what do you think is going on with this idea of a new airport? Do you think it's ever going to be built? Well, um, you know, sometimes you say, um, I, when you vote, you vote one way and you say, I, I, you know, you love to say, I told you so. Well, this is one of those situations where I don't want to say, I told you so. I voted against this airport in this situation because I didn't believe it could actually happen on time and on budget. And in fact, I actually wrote legislation, um, an ordinance that said, do not allow any general fund dollars to go to this project. And so there is an ordinance now on the table that says we're not supposed to do that. And I'm very fr fearful that those things will happen in the past. In, convoluted ways, and I'm worried about that. I know you must hear a lot from your constituents. What do they ask you about? What do they talk about? They want to know why it's delayed and why it's taking so long, and they want to know why an airport that was $964 million turned into over $2 billion. Well, they beyond, know. beyond the airport, what do they ask you about? What did they ask me about? What did they ask, they ask you about oh, citywide anyway, uh, oh. issues? Well, they asked me about public safety. They want to know why we're more concerned with streetcars than our potholes. They want to know why <laughs> we aren't spending the money on potholes. That's a really big deal. We are really um, hurting in our infrastructure all over the city, not just in District 1. I, I but thought all there over. was a, an election not long ago that was going to allocate money mm -hmm. to make great changes in the infrastructure. Right. With the geo bond, we did allocate funds, and it's just not happening, um, I, in my opinion, at the rate we should. And then the other thing they asked for they asked for a fire station and one of my campaign promises was I would build them a fire station in my district and we did and we are we're building it right now the foundations are in and we're building that and I'm, I'm pleased to say uh, one campaign promise for sure that we said we would do we're working on and we're building that right now and that's exciting do they ask you to see about building a streetcar north of the river no they never asked me about that are they interested in the one downtown and the future one going out to um, the plaza I never get any comments about that 
Are you in favor of the streetcar development downtown, or do you think it's a waste of money and time and effort? Um, I think it's a waste of taxpayer dollars. If somebody privately wants to do that and they want to fund it, go for it. But I don't believe it's something that we should be in the business of doing. A lot of your fellow council members are running for mayor. Are you backing anyone in particular? No, I'm not. After the primary and there are two candidates running for mayor, will you likely back one of the two? I can't answer that this time because I don't know who it's going to be. Yeah, but you, know? you might consider backing one of the two? I think it would depend on who it was. I would tell you all of them are really nice people, but there's a lot of pros and cons to everything. All right. Well, it's a pleasure to see you again. Thanks Thank very much you. for coming in. Come back and keep us posted on what's going on at City Hall and up north of the river. I will. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you so much. That is Kansas City, Missouri Councilwoman Heather Hall. Now let's meet the panel and start a ruckus. Jason Grill is the founder of J. Grill Media and a senior advisor at Paris Communications. Happy to welcome back to the program Denidri Herbert with The Sentinel, a conservative website. John Stevens is the president and CEO of Port KC. And attorney Steve Marakian is with the law firm of Worsh Hobbs and Marakian. Steve is a graduate of West Point and the Michael Cohen School of Law. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to all of you. Thanks for coming in. It has taken a year, but the Kansas City, Missouri City Council finally gave approval to changing the name of the Paseo Boulevard to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. New signs should be ready in a few months. Two of the council members who are running for mayor, Scott Wagner and Alicia Kennedy, voted against the change. The other mayor hopefuls on the council voted in favor. This is but one of a number of issues candidates for mayor will be asked about by the media and the public before the April 2nd primary. The Star has suggested six critical areas in need of discussion, public safety, economic development, affordable housing, KCI, tax policy, and pre-K education. Of those, which one or two need the most discussion, do you think? And we'll start with John. Well, obviously all of those and more are very, very important. However, uh, if, if the new mayor, whomever that may be, uh, and the new council don't address public safety and making sure that KCI, that that terminal project continues to move forward and, and really gets underway, I think that will de derail their, uh, their entire first term. So those two are the two that I would say really need to be focused on. All right, Jason, what do you say? Which one or two? Uh, I think infrastructure. I know that wasn't in the six, but I think that's something we need to think about as a city. We've got a lot of potholes. Well, so but pot but, but as I was saying, uh, <laughs> Councilwoman Hall, there were bonds just passed a year or so ago right. designed to give the money to the city to make those improvements. Yeah, they, they need to do them, and they well, need to continue and, doing and, them. And, 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 and I would say, Mike, I would say infrastructure also, too, like workforce development, economic development, job creation, all of these things have to continue to happen on the Missouri state level and on the Kansas City level. Steve, what would you say uh, would be one or two of the major items that the uh, media and the public should ask these mayoral candidates about? I'm particularly concerned with public safety. Kansas City has a, a very, very bad reputation, particularly for the murder rate mm -hmm. uh, and, and crime. And it, it's, it's not just in isolated areas. Unfortunately, it, it's throughout the metro area, and it's mm -hmm. causing not only a bad reputation, it's, it's really affecting tourism, in my opinion. But I also agree that economic development, I throw into that the, uh, the KCI development, uh, that's critically important uh, for any, any mayoral candidate. And, and uh, having essentially a, a five to 10 year vision of how the how the, the city is going to grow uh, mm -hmm. and with a close look at how they use uh, the TIF benefits. I, I've always been opposed uh, and think they have misused those and I think anyone who's running now should be laying out a plan for how they would address economic development without and still making people pay their taxes. Tax policy, yeah. Uh, uh, Denidri, when people talk about public safety in Kansas City, Missouri, aren't they really talking about the homicide tool? Uh, yes, I think so, but I do think there's a fear. I live, I'll just be, I live in Johnson County, and we sometimes joke, my friends and I, when we're going to go out to dinner or someplace, do we want to go into Kansas City? Do we want to go down to the plaza? Do we want to go to Westport? And if it's late enough, we're like, mm, let's just stay in Overland Park because we don't want to get shot at. We're not afraid necessarily of actually being murdered, but we don't want to be down there when somebody's, when bullets are flying. I mean, it, that may be stereotypical and maybe too much, but we joke about it, and we're joking about it because there's some truth there. I, you know, I always thought that homicides were not something that could be controlled. They're generally acts of passion. 
not planned in advance? Well, I, I, I think there is some of that, but also the, the high homicide rate that, we're, that we've had for a, a couple years now and that we're seeing has in, continued to increase, there, there are systemic issues there as far as how you work in the neighborhoods, how you work to divert uh, various types of criminal activity, and, and it is something that is real because there, there is the economic uh, impact of that, but it also impacts thousands and thousands of families and lives, and that carries over into education, it carries over into affordable housing mm -hmm. and quality affordable housing in neighborhoods. These are all issues that if you can't address the crime rate and the systemic crime rate and get people uh, uh, less uh, less scared to live in certain neighborhoods, we're never going to go to dinner. We're never going to be able to address much, the other much, things. Much more than ever before, it's, it's drug and gang related. Yes. It's, it's yes. no longer acts of passion. They're always involved there, but the, the drug and gang activity is out of control in most of our urban areas around the country, and Kansas City is no exception. Sly James uh, won't be mayor when this year comes to an end. He'll serve through, I think it's August. Uh, has he been a good mayor, do you think? That feels like a loaded question. I think anybody looking from the outside would say absolutely he, we are in theory, getting a new airport. I'll believe it when I see it. Um, we, the, the power and light district has taken off and we can see some visible signs of progress. However, I continue to go back to the murder rate and the, um, the infrastructure, which everybody here was just complaining about the potholes. If those things aren't taken care of, I question the, the value of a power and light district that people are one day going to be afraid to go to because of <clears throat> gang activity. I, I don't feel as unsafe as everyone else, I guess, on this panel with Kansas City. I think Mayor Sly James has done a great job. Mm -hmm. I think that with the amount of power that the actual mayor has in our city, he's done a really good job yep. moving our city forward. And whoever the next mayor is has to continue to do that. We can't move backward. We have to work on all these things. We also have to continue on the momentum of what we are. He's kind of, kind of a strong mayor without a strong mayor city charter uh, to uh, back him. Absolutely. And, and I agree with Jason. He has set an incredibly high bar. No mayor in any city. <laughs> any terms, especially one that serves two terms as mayor, is going to be without people questioning some of their actions and some of their decisions. That being said, I think he has done more for this city. He has presided over growth. He has accelerated growth. He has reinvested in the community. There are things that the, that the next mayor needs to do and needs to address, certainly. He's done a great job. Quick final question to you. Uh, who's going to be the next mayor? <laughs> is, is, is Julie Justice in the lead, as Steve Kraske says she is in the star? I wouldn't, I wouldn't dispute that I think right now that that's probably the common understanding. I have no idea who the next mayor is going to be, and I, but I think we do have a great field, and I look forward to all these dozens of upcoming discussions and debates because there's going to be a lot of great issues put out there. Chastain's an underdog. <laughs> uh, about Here as likely one. as the gondolas. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now that Kansas U.S. Senator Pat Roberts has announced he won't run for re-election next year, there's a growing list of potential candidates to replace him. Most of the attention is focused on GOP possibilities because Roberts is a Republican and the state usually elects Republicans to the U.S. Senate. Kansas City Star editorial board, no fan of Republican Chris Kobach, as you may have noticed, says the Kansas GOP, whose proactive efforts make certain that you will never have to again hear the words GOP nominee Chris Kobach, we wholeheartedly endorse. The editorial notes efforts to recruit Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Pompeo rather, a former Kansas congressman, to run for the Senate in 2020. So, Denidri, I know that you follow Kansas politics closely, and you know Chris Kobach. You worked for him during the campaign. You know Mike Pompeo. Do you think Pompeo will get in and Kobach will stay out? or what do we... I think the chances of Mike Pompeo getting in are about equal to me delivering quintuplets in the ocean <laughs> while living in Kansas. I just don't think it's very likely. I think um, Secretary Pompeo puts a lot of stock in historical tr trends and he's very ambitious and ultimately I think he wants to be president and the, going through the Senate doesn't get him any closer than where he is right now. I don't think he gets in. I want to ask you something because I know you have worked with Kobach. You were the yes. spokesperson during the campaign. Yes. Uh, do you understand the apparent hostility that much of the news media has toward Kobach? Why yeah. is that? I, 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 I don't know. I sincerely... Is he unpleasant to be no, around? Is he I, I rude to I will be honest. When I started working for him, I didn't know him that well. And um, when during the campaign, I spent 16 hours a day with him, half of which were spent in a car, so in close quarters. Like I know him really well, and he's He's just a lovely human, and I don't, I'm not sure that translates well because he does use 
strong language, I get, and not cuss words, but just strong language that is, if you're not in a small group and you don't get to see him laugh and you don't, you don't know that, but they, they're they're misguided completely in their impressions of him. I, I, I wouldn't dispute the the public <laughs> perceptions versus versus non-public perceptions. I would say he brings a lot of that on himself with 50 caliber machine gun mounted on a red, white, and blue jeep in parades, things like that. Some of his bombastic language, I think, clearly sets him up for counter responses that can be pretty strong. Steve, have you ruled yourself out as a potential candidate for the Senate in 2020? <laughs> no, I, 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 I was going to make my announcement today, but since you just made it for me, uh, he's I'll toasting start himself my, today. You, you can, you can, <laughs> my he's my fundraiser again, again, page, again. Yeah, again. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, uh, I, I doubt that I'll run. Uh, it depends who, on, who do you it, like? It depends, <laughs> on, it depends <laughs> on Pompeo. Are, are you a big Pompeo fan? I am, and and I, I'm not sure I agree with the need though. I, I will say she is much closer to this than I am. And I do understand what she's saying about Pompeo's ambitions. However, I don't see Pompeo as uh, truly as a viable 2020 candidate for president. And therefore, I think that it is much more li it's more likely than not that he will run. Because I think as Secretary of State, you can only go so far. I think the next logical step for him is, as opposed to getting out of government, would be to be a senator from Kansas, which he would win in a walk. Um, I, th I respect him greatly and think he would be a good senator. And I think because of his particular sort of agenda and view and support of the Trump agenda, he believes that having, whether Trump is the president in 2020 or not, having more Republicans in the Senate will help whoever is the president. I think he'll run. And if he, he, if he runs, he'll win. When he, if he runs, I will agree. I think he has a, a, a wide, a clear he, path. Pompeo, but I don't think Pompeo runs again. When he left Wichita, he put his house on auction and sold half the belongings in it. I have never, with it, I have never seen a cleaner um, exodus, if you will. Just, I'm out, I'm not coming back. Um, I, I think he has widely signaled that he is... He's not, I, I love Mike, but he's not really a Kansan at this point any longer. Uh, We've Jason, already had a senator from Virginia. Jason, who are some of the other Republicans? <laughs> there are a lot of Republicans who are talked about and yep. who may get in. Who are some of the others? Yeah, there's a lot. Well, Kevin Yoder's name's brought up, but I don't think that's happening. He's a yep. lobbyist now in D.C., making a, a fair amount of money, I'm assuming, so I can't see him coming back next year. Uh, How about Collier? Uh, Collier's in there. He obviously just ran statewide, and mm -hmm. uh, I think that he could be a possibility. And as far as the Democrats go, Barry Grossman's probably... Yeah. Talking about it, I've, I've known him. Run? Who's that? Will Sebelius run? I doubt that. I, right. I doubt it. Uh, Who knows, though, right? I mean, yeah. will, will Democrats, given what happened in 2018, have a better shot at the U.S. Senate in Kansas in 2020? Well, I think they'll certainly have a better shot. It is still a long shot because the, the Democratic Party has never built a true statewide network mm. in many, many years in Kansas. I think they, they, did, they took great steps in this last election, in this last cycle. I don't think they're there yet for a senatorial run, but I could be wrong. The right candidate and the right momentum could 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 sway it. Think there's a chance they'll recruit Marakian? Uh, you know, I'm open. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, look, I, you know, so just uh, switch, I, switch parties. I'll give you my email what words? Right? Right? We got this. Right. Oh, I'll switch in a minute. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There is a veritable plethora of government agencies and jobs in Kansas City, and there's a lot of them too. So it's not surprising that a partial shutdown, thank you for laughing and getting that, partial shutdown of government gets many people's attention. The 35-day shutdown spawned by a budget battle over border security, i.e. a wall, ended last Friday with a three-week continuing resolution. President Trump says if he doesn't get financial support for a wall, he will either close the government again or declare an emergency and get the money that way. House and Senate Democratic leaders say they want border security, but not the wall. Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the wall is immoral. So, Steve Marakin, is the president in control here, or do the Democrats have him up against a wall? Well, I may be in a minority in this view, but I think that the president is very much in control, and I think that what's being overlooked here is that the president is is a lot craftier and smarter than a lot of people think. He's playing the long game here. For, for, for the president, in my opinion, uh, this is all about 2020. I think the president's plan here all along has been, basically, he knows he's not going to get a deal. I don't think by the 15th he's going to get a deal. I think he would love nothing more than to declare a national emergency. I think he's wanted to do that. He knows a national emergency will last one day till a federal court shuts it down. And over the next two years, while we get more and more caravans coming up, more and more chaos on the border, more and more people coming in here illegally, he's going to sit back and say, I wanted a wall. I promised a wall. 
the Democrats won't allow it and the federal courts won't allow it. So you need to reelect me. I'll appoint more judges and I'll do what needs to be done once we can get control of the House. I think the Democrats are in a position of when you wish for something, you better be careful because you just might get it. And they're in a situation right now where I don't think they sense, maybe I'm wrong, I don't think I am, I don't think they sense the angst in this country, not in California, not in New York. There is enormous angst in this country about what's happening with our immigration system. If you don't believe there's a crisis on the border, you're kidding yourself. We have a crisis in immigration right now. The president gets it. He knows it. And he is, I think he desperately hopes there'll be no deal by the 15th so that he can declare a national emergency. But, but John, there's a lot of angst about government shutdowns in this country. Absolutely. And, and I think that uh, the, the Democrats in Washington did a pretty good job of, of conveying that the government shutdown harms border security. That, that the shutdown is actually did more in a lot in creating more crisis at the border. Uh, and I don't know, I wouldn't go so far as that we have this crisis. I think some of this, there, there is an immigration issues that need to be addressed. There are significant immigration issues. Um, I think claiming that we have a national border crisis, border security <coughs> issues, I think is way overblown. And I do think that while the president may be playing a long game, he is a victim of his own chaos in his own administration, and there are a lot of things that could that could disrail. If he is playing a long game, there are a lot of things between now and 2020 that could derail his plan. They get an agreement by February 15th? No, they won't. And it's not. I agree mostly with everything Steve said, but I will say I think one of the challenges the, Demo the challenges the Democrat Party has, and Nancy Pelosi in particular, is she can't hold her coalition together. I don't think they have an agreement, not because everyone's completely unruling, but because she can't allow a vote for anything she doesn't want to pass, because she doesn't know what her co what her Democrats will do. I don't think she can hold her caucus together. Uh, Democrats argue for a smart wall. What is a smart wall? Ask the president. He knows more about technology than anyone, Mike. You know that? <laughs> um, you know, well, I, don't I know thought exactly he was a millennial would know is, all about it. it. There's, there's things that can be done with technology that we're not talking about a big concrete wall well, That's what wall it means, here. right? This uh, is the Great Wall of China. The use is, of technology to, right. to yeah. detect and people. And they've been doing that, I think. And I think that if I'm not wrong, it doesn't, doesn't everything show that the immigra illegal immigration has gone down in our country? No, that's it completely wrong. That's, okay. You are wrong, Jason. And here's what the smart wall is a complete misnomer, okay? What the smart wall does, and the Democrats know this very well, the smart wall simply allows us to detect the people who have come across. Once they're across, they're arrested. Once they're here, they're here to stay. The smart wall doesn't prevent the person from coming in. It's like saying, my house is secure because I have a door camera. I'm leaving the front door open, but I can see you when you come in. Now, once you're in there, of course, so, I'm screwed. Don't, and you that's believe, the problem. don't you believe they should come together on this, though, and do something? Well, of course, but they're not going to, Jason. That's I, the problem. I, I know. You will you never basically get, laid out the Trump right, agenda, the you Trump will never chief get, of staff. You're, but, you're running the campaign why, there. But that's why I'm telling you, in my view, the president is viewing this in the long game because we all talk about we should fix the immigration They've problem. They've been doing that for years. Our, our, exactly. Yeah. Our asylum and rules are completely exactly. insane. But they're never going to change. And so what the president's going to run on in 2020 is, look, folks, this is insane, and we now have another 5 million that we didn't want mm -hmm. and who shouldn't be here, and we're doing nothing about it. So here's what we need. We need more Republicans, and we need me. And when and the that's court shut be, him down, that's going to resonate. And the, and the report, and the court, help his case. and he'll say, everything I've tried to do, a campaign. federal judge in Hawaii or California shuts down, that's horrible. And you're going to see millions of Americans coming Look, right back to this issue saying we need someone who is strong. And all I want to see is actually some compromises right. and negotiations. I would, I would like, love let's to come see together that. and work together. I would love this. to see it. All right, so let's work it. together That's and end this discussion. <laughs> okay. And head to the soapbox for roast and toast where the Ruckettes have 30 seconds to speculate, vitiate, or obviate. And we start with Jason. I just I want to roast all the people uh, walking around <laughs> town or fill out these online polls that are saying that they're not going to watch the Super Bowl on Sunday. I, I think that's crazy. Crazy. It's a national yeah. holiday. It's you get together with your friends, get over it. We're gonna be great next year. The Chiefs are gonna be great. You actually kind of, I think, want the Patriots to win, so next year we can knock them off the <laughs> ledge. But hey, have some fun. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Uh, do what Americans do. They eat nachos, chicken wings, <laughs> hang out with their friends and family, and they enjoy. That's the, the most ball. controversial thing said on this <laughs> show, <Yeah>. today. <laughs> Senator, Senator Marakian. Uh, Kamala Harris is latest leftist loon to announce for the presidency. Here's her vision for America. Open borders, you want a better life? Come on in. Free medical care for all, including illegals. Free education for all, including illegals. 
Biofuels gone. Goodbye natural gas, coal and gas for cars and homes and factories. And best yet, abortion for all to the moment of birth. Now, how do we pay for all the free stuff? Well, we confiscate wealth from you greedy rich folks. So I asked my rich liberal friends, you own businesses, drive SUVs, live in big houses, pay 95% of all the taxes. Are you ready to jump on the crazy train? Uh, Dan uh, this is a Vinny <coughs> Dark Toast. Thank you, John, for that. For Howard Schultz, the uh, Starbucks CEO who has announced he intends to run for president. Um, and he's recognized that he's not a Democrat. And I think that's, I wish more people would do that. I wish people in my own party, the Republicans, would do that. Recognize both parties have platforms. And when you go through the platform, if you disagree with a large number of the things on it, then you go your own way. Be an independent or go to the other party. And I appreciate him being honest and upfront. And John. Well, I feel like I should be instilling a, an incredible sense of fear in everyone, but instead I'm going to give a toast to Governor Mike Parson. He has shown in his short time as Missouri governor that he is committed to Kansas City. He's committed to listening, visiting Kansas City on a regular basis. He's committed to restoring low-income housing tax credits and really addressing economic and job issues that Kansas City and that the state of Missouri need. All right, and finally, and I'll follow up on Denidri's comments, now that Starbucks King Howard Schultz is running for president, he, of course, has to figure out a campaign slogan. One very good suggestion is this. Make America Grande again. <laughs> and that's Ruckus for this week. We'll be back next Thursday at 7. Now for the Ruckus and the crew, Mike Shannon saying thanks for watching and good night.